Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And it is Monday, March the 15th, 2021. My name is Clyde J. Gale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 88. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here each week. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in each week. And I hope that, uh, hope we don't bore you too much. Um, This week, the recommend videos, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see the, uh, our discussion videos. And I picked up some, uh, selected some uh, short ones, yeah. The theme, basically, I come, came up with is, um, and I think it kind of might have shocked Diane and Constance, because we're going to share <laughs> a little honesty with our, are you satisfied with your art career? Is your art career making progress? And these videos kind of give some pointers, and it's more of a uh, soul search, searching or uh, looking within oneself which is kind of like a little bit about what we've been talking about these last um, two episodes. The first episode was from our friend Rafi, Rafi Rant, and he talked about uh, being concerned with uh, telling a story about your art and everything. So uh, I assume, Diana Constance, you got a chance to uh, to watch that and listen to Rafi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Diane, you want to lead (laughs) You agree or disagree with Rafi? Or? Well, I think it, it's it's all a choice, like what you end up doing in a day. And <clears throat> sometimes life does get in the way, and that that choice is made for you in a way. <laughs> but um, you know, as far as keeping your art practice um, alive and well, it really needs to be a more of a priority than some other things in your life, and. You know, there's times when you have to make choice between things, and it's not always easy sometimes because, you know, sometimes it involves your family or, you know, things that happen with your kids or whatever. But um, you have to try to put some time aside every day to be able to do your creation of whatever you're making. So I think I kind of agree with him at that point, I guess. I mean, you need to have um, your art needs to be a priority to some extent. I mean, I don't know if it's a priority of your family, but 
you know, yep. it just depends on what, what, if you have young kids or something or, you know, like my kids are older, so they're not as much of a priority anymore. <laughs> so yeah, it comes down to, if you say you are a professional art artist, or you say you want to pursue an art career, then right. You have to be willing to make that commitment. Constance, what, uh, what's your uh, thoughts on, on this subject? Well, from the, what I got from Rafi was, just, you know, it was talking about um, having a story behind your behind your work and being able to articulate with other people about your work and letting them into your life so they understand what your work is about when you're when you're showing your work. And that's one of the reasons I always like doing shows is because I got to meet the people that stopped in the booth and talk to them about my work even when I was selling jewelry you know I always liked talking to people about the the kind of jewelry I was making and even when I was selling art it was the same thing you know uh, I, I liked having people stop in because they like to look at your work and then you could start a conversation with them about about your you know because they're curious about you and why you paint the way you paint and and because everybody has their own painting style and that evolves over the years. So, yeah, yeah their, that's their, their own motivations, and everything. And that, that comes down to what, you know, Diane was saying with, uh, you know, uh, priority, your prior mm-hmm. art and, and, uh, of that's, that's your story. That's your, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, you're, uh, you have to, you know, open you, it's like Rafi says, you don't have to tell all the dirty laundry. <clears throat> a little more open, you know, and uh, I had a recent example. <clears throat> um, last last week I had told Diane and Constance about this, but I didn't, you know, uh, tell the audience. Um, one of my uh, pieces of work was an abstract piece. I had entered it in a online contest and it was awarded a uh, special recognition, which completely shocked me because I don't do abstract. I'm a representational artist. And then I was just, I was pleased, but I was also kind of shocked. Then this last week I had one of my followers who wanted to purchase it. So that got me really a thinking because the tendency would be, oh boy, I'm going to do some more abstracts. And so I can say, do you want to buy that? No. <laughs> After the final analysis, when I really think about what made this piece unique and why it might have appealed to uh, the curator of the art show and why it had might, might have appealed to the individual, the collector who wants, he wants to buy it. Um, when I started this piece, it was going to be a representational piece. I was looking at a photograph that my one of my daughters had taken of the Bay of Naples in Italy. Uh, it was, an, it was a, at uh, night night time, and you could see Vesuvius in in the you know in the classic. It was a classical Bay of Naples with Vesuvius in the background, and a little bit of water and a shoreline. And I had st- started with the intention of uh doing that kind of a painting uh because it just brought up memories of when i lived over there and i had spent i had spent time exactly where my daughters you know were standing when they took that picture so i had a connection i had a feeling you know with it and um but it wasn't working out it was too dark and the color of the water wasn't working. So rather than just completely stop and, uh, you know, reject so and re- reuse the, it was on a canvas panel. I said, well, this would be an opportunity for me to, I told myself, this would be an opportunity for me to use my uh, palette knife and kind of play around with some color. So I threw some oranges on there and some yellow and what, and I turned it into a, a, uh, a uh, sunrise scene. In fact, I called it Good Morning Napoli, the title of the piece. But I did it in such a way where it was rather abstract. You know, unless you, 
when my daughters see the see the piece, they knew exactly what it was. But the average person wouldn't know what you know what what it was. It would look rather abstract. Um, this was a it was with our discussion of a couple podcasts ago of a Steve Houston when he says sometimes you just have to play. That was my play. This piece was my play. I was just playing. Now, if I go back and I try to create something like that intentionally, I'll fall flat. I, I know it'll fall flat. As it is, this piece, when, pe- when the viewer sees it, they, see, they, they take away something. They pick up on the, um, with the, my choice of coloring and layering the coloring. They pick up on the emotion because I had several comments like that. I said, Clyde, this is very emotional. Yeah, and they pick up because I was putting that in the back of my mind. That was because that was I was uh, remembering, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, activity the the years ago living in Italy and and uh, and there there was quite a bit of emotion, you know. So in my choice of color, even though I was playing, I was still that that was coming through. So. It's a one of a kind thing. I don't know if I, you know, it was what uh, Stephen Bauman calls a happy accident. <laughs> After I got done with, that, I said, I told myself, you know, that'd be I ought to put that up my on my website. That's a pretty decent, you know, it'd be a nice design for a piece of clothing or apparel or something. You know, that was my whole intention, <laughs> not taking it real seriously. So when Rafi talked about a story, had someone asked me, no one ever did, but had someone asked me, well, what does this mean? That would be my story. <laughs> it would be a real story because when I, every time I see that piece, all those memories and all those emotions come back, you know, and everything. And it's a story that I'd be willing to share. Like I just did to the millions of listeners who listen to our podcast. It's not, it's, it's not anything private. It would be a you know a story that if someone asked me, uh, but it's nice that uh, some viewers are able to pick that up without me having to say it. And that, and I think that's what makes the piece successful. And that's why this collector, you know, wanted to buy it because he he picked up on some of that, you know. And uh, I uh, I certainly I would turn into a hack if I tried to uh, make other pieces like like it to sell i don't think they'd be very successful at all okay that's my story i'm sticking to it <laughs> now let's go on to the other ones the stephen bauman video and we talked about you know putting putting yourself uh out there and i think that that also falls in line with uh quite a bit of what uh of uh, Raffi was saying, and is Stephen Bauman's discussion. I guess I had in my mind when I was uh, trying to analyze why this painting was successful and everything. And um, uh, Diane, what's uh? Yeah, I think I think most people can tell if there's um, some real emotion behind a painting, rather than just um, painting a subject or an object or something that doesn't mean anything to you. I think that, you know, your, your attachment or um, memory or whatever it is that um, ties you to the painting and what you're, what you're painting, your emotions and feelings come through no matter what. Whereas if it's just some random stuff that you're painting, it, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen that way. Yeah, even like Steve Houston, even when you're playing. When when you also playing, you're when you're just sketching or just throwing some paint around and color, that that comes through. Constance, you you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, and the thing that Stefan was talking about is uh, putting emotions into your work. You know, telling a story with your work. You know, and uh, he gave some examples during his thing, but the, he's right. I mean, a lot of times when you're doing a plain air painting, you you're telling a story with that painting, you know, because something about it struck you that you wanted to paint that for that reason, you know, the clouds or the water or the landscape or the tree or whatever it is that's in that painting that's talking to you that you wanted to paint it, then, and, you know, you tell us, you're telling a story with that, you know, whether it's animals. And and his, you know, he, one of his students, 
uh, had, uh, cause you know, I hit the assignment for him. This has been the, about a year ago when he was doing, uh, you know, video recordings of in front of his class, you know, and, uh, one of his students, I guess he had asked them to, to paint an emotion or to demonstrate with their pain, you know, and the example was this woman had, she is sitting or running in front of a house and you can see there's, there's lawn chairs and pieces of, of the house strung around and everything. And she had painted the event of when a tornado was coming. Uh-huh. She was, you know, and Stefan, he, he, you know, he, he told her, he asked her, he said, everybody agrees. We caught that. So we didn't know it was a tornado, but we knew you were running from something. Big, yeah, she had gathered up the children. Yeah, he, <laughs> right. He said, even when it was <clears throat> when you had it propped up against a wall, I could see that you were running from something. <laughs> yeah, it's, and the fact that you tell us a tornado that even makes more sense, you know, now because with the, with the pieces of the house, you know, uh, the the uh, roofing, uh, the angles, whatever, laying on the ground and flying around, and and yeah. You know, I thought that, you know, that was rather interesting, you know, when the, it goes back to what, you know, Diane said, you know, if, if we, if we uh, have a connection with the subject, regardless of what the subject is, you know, if we, if we do it right, um, then uh, the viewer will pick up some, and the viewer may not even pick up the meaning of, of what we're intention. I think that uh, Steve Houston gave a lecture where he says um, that, uh, He's always fascinated by uh, he when he was doing his his paintings of uh, boxers, and he would tell people. He said some viewers would come up to him when uh, when he had his when he was doing gallery shows, and would come up and say, "Well, I actually said I don't like boxing, but with your piece, I can see the uh, the emotion and the stress that the fighters were going through, and he said, that uh, that ring a bell with me." And, uh, you know, he was impressed, you know, impressed by that. Or he said he had one listener tell, come up to him in, uh, in, in uh, complete anger and that he was upset that this guy was, looked like he was being beat to death. <laughs> and he, he was skinnier than the other guy when Steve didn't even have that intention at all when he painted it. <laughs> so... You, you never, you know, like I posted when I posted this uh, image on Facebook and the different comments there. Uh, I think it was our artist friend Ann Farley made a comment that uh, you can uh, really see uh, see the emotion, you know, coming through that. And I replied to her. I said, "It all it's it's always fascinating by uh, what the viewer picks up." Yeah, and I, I I'm kind of like Steve Houston like that. I, I I I'm curious to see what people, you know, how how on because how close they are to what I'm thinking is how successful that I think I've done, which sometimes isn't always a good thing, right, Diane? <laughs> well, it depends because people um, put their own emotion, their own experiences and stuff into what they're looking at. So, like, um, they might see, like, the one person you said might see, you know, an awful exhibition of people beating each other up, you know, and somebody else saw these two wonderful fighters, you know, head-to-head kind of, and it was like, you know, it depends on where where their their viewpoint, where they're coming from, so it it changes what they see. So, you know, you can't really um, paint to what other people are going to take away from the painting. You know, they might have a completely different experience. Like I paint a lot of ocean paintings. Somebody that hates the ocean is going to be like, you know, there's somebody that's terrified of the ocean wouldn't get the same emotion that I get from it. Cause I love the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I do too. It's, yeah. It's a totally different viewpoint. You know, maybe they had a bad experience when they were a child or something that, you know, terrified them that of the water. It's, you know, it's, Okay. It, 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 interpretation can be different depending on the person looking at the painting. And this all seg- segues great into the big question. Diane, are you satisfied with the progress of your art career 
to date? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if any, well, I don't know. I guess some people might be, but I don't know if anybody ever really is because you're always striving to be better and go further and, you know, I have I, more accomplishments. I noticed, and Notice I didn't say artwork. I said art career. All right. So. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely well, paying more than now anyway. than I did, than I have in the past. So I guess I'm happy with that. Okay. Constance, what about you? <laughs> Are you satisfied with your art career? Uh, no, no. I would like for it to be better. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having some serious struggles as of the last six months. So if I can get the struggles that I'm having under control, I might be able to to dive back into what I want to do i mean it's it's kind of hard when you're having personal struggles to get in your way and it's frustrating you know so i'm gonna be contrary to both of you i am actually <laughs> satisfied with my art career but i've been pursuing it at a shorter period than the both of you <laughs> so i haven't had time enough to have enough failures it's been only four years <laughs> to i'm notice i'm not saying talking about art and i'm also not talking about just artists in general i've been an artist my whole life but it's only been the last four years that i've decided to pursue a professional career as an artist in which i would take steps for you know develop strategies and marketing and getting a word about myself out there and we've gone over that i'm not going to repeat any of that you know here but i'm i say i'm happy because if I can can uh, have a positive upward trajectory, little baby steps, regardless of what they are, to the outside person, well, that's not a big deal. If I win win a uh, an award in an art contest, bingo, makes me happy. If I sell a piece of artwork, bingo, makes me happy. Uh, if I uh, get accepted into this uh, uh, exhibition or that exhi exhibition, okay, these are because these are things I haven't done before. So these, so this is all, so this is new to me. So my perspective is different than I haven't uh, been uh, uh, doing it long enough to get into a uh, depressing or jaded attitude. However. However, I don't think my attitude is jaded. I don't want to depressing. I, I just think I'm having I don't some, think so either. <laughs> personal struggles right now, you know, health wise that are really encumbering me for what I would like, where I would like to be and what I would like to be doing. Yes. Um, when you're spending three fourths of your week in bed with a headache, yep. then yeah, it's, it's, it's a real struggle, you know, because I would rather be in the studio working, but, Okay, don't jump. I should not have used that word jaded. <laughs> that was not a good you term. You stepped into that one fine. Yeah, you did step into that one big time. <laughs> well, I don't think I have that a negative attitude either. I just, you know, it, I've been doing it for a long time. So it's, yeah. And I just, I started before computers and everything, which you have the, Clyde, you have the advantage that you didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> you know, was you didn't really. All that. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a whole different way of waiting waiting for it, uh but... waiting for slides to be developed waiting for paint for pictures to be developed and sending things mm -hmm. snail mail all the time instead of mm -hmm. you know that's the segue uh, gary venerchik you know, when he talks about adversity is your success and that i'm, sorry, I'm suffering from adversity right now <laughs> i want to <laughs> get past it <laughs> goes honky dory and smooth along the way you 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 don't appreciate and you you don't uh you know you really you may have a success success to a point but then you're going to fall down because with adversity uh all the roadblocks and all the little things that pop up in your way that makes you decide look into yourself and say do i really want to pursue this do i really want to to uh uh, be an artist. Do I really want to do this? And it makes you, it forces you to, to sit back and to figure out how to get over those roadblocks. I think that is, you know. yeah, that, that is true because I mean, I went to art school and I know probably, I would say probably 
probably 80 percent of the kids that I went to school with are not doing art now probably I mean I don't know for a fact but I know a lot of them aren't and you know they just gave up because it was too hard and here hard. I am I'm still plugging along but it's like you know it's hard sometimes it is you hard you gotta keep you gotta keep going yep you know, not not let you not 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 let it knock you down permanently <laughs> yeah I mean it's yeah. kind of like a little kid you know when they're start, starting to learn how to walk they don't just give up you know and not, never walk again when they fall down a few times yeah you have to keep getting up and keep going forward yep but it's tough sometimes yeah. it really is and that you know that 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 last video which I think you had in your mind from that professor every artist has a calling and where you have to prioritize your uh you know i could tell that that really resonated with you when you said about prioritizing mm -hmm. you know, your, your family whatever because because the activity the activity of pursuing an art career the activity of uh creating art works of art that in itself is what is really, really rewarding that is what life is you know is all about so I think between the three of us there, we've got that definite bug that if we weren't trying to pursue a career, we would still be doing it maybe in a little right. different, you know, different fashion because it does bring us joy. It does. It brings, when I really get into a good painting and, and like the cream of the crop is when somebody else really appreciates and they want to buy your work. And like that painting that I described that abstract work, I had no intentions of it actually being a true abstract, as they say, you know, terminology. I was just having fun playing with the paint, pushing it around with a palette knife and, and getting the right color combinations. And, and, and it was just so much fun, so much fun. You know, and everything. Well, that came across in the piece, apparently. So, yeah, nobody want, yeah. You know, so that, you know, and if, if I didn't have it out there for sale, it's, I probably would have, it, it wasn't hanging on my wall. Cause I had so many, so much other stuff. I ain't got enough wall, wall space to hang on my art, <laughs> but it would have, it's one of those pieces I would have, you know, hung on my wall because of that meaning, you know, and everything. So the fact that some, that I decided to, in the case of, you know, uh, what Rafi talks about, and what Stephen Bauman, you know, put yourself out there. The fact that I had put it out there is a, it's now given me three forms of satisfaction. The first of just pure joy of creating it. The second of the appreciation of the other viewers that have enjoyed it. And the fact that it actually a curator picked it for an exhibition, an online exhibition, and then awarded a prize. And now the third somebody wants to buy it and put it on their wall ladies and gentlemen you can't have it any better than that as far as i'm concerned <laughs> that's that, this is the artist's life this is the this is the the, the pleasure of it and uh yes it's a, it's hard yes there's adversity but hey hot dog i wouldn't have it any other way what about you diane yeah, I mean, they all, I mean, they talk about, you know, your definition of success, like, it's not always the same for everybody. A lot of people think being su successful is having loads of money and, you know, <laughs> being rich and famous and all that stuff, but that's not necessarily everybody's definition. And artists, I think, I don't think do it for money. We just do it for the love of creating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, we would, like you said before, we would do it even if we weren't pursuing as the career it's just yeah. part of who we are Constance you, you agree with that yes yeah because I've been painting since I was a child and I've always enjoyed it you know even if they don't come out the way I want them to I still enjoy doing it and I always will enjoy doing it you know so yep that's the big the big thing is <laughs> enjoying it I think I think with that we will uh, wrap up this episode. Uh, one last last call to uh, all of those uh, budding artists out there. 
uh, go ahead and draw that picture. Go ahead and paint. And if you want to uh, pursue a career, there's lots of resources. Uh, uh, we'll be glad to help you here. Uh, you can join us, and we'll uh, you know share share our experiences with you, and maybe give you some ideas. Some you know, them, there's uh, multiple resources out there that you don't have to pay for that are available. Believe me, just don't prop your money down to a, a quick fix class because in the end it, it probably won't won't help you but if you don't want to pursue a career but you just like to paint you just like to draw do it anyhow don't feel guilty about it you have a much better life <laughs> so we're going to wrap this up this is you've been listening to the artist friends podcast episode 88 march the 15th 2021 and i'm going to say bye to diane hunt constance bronson let Diane say. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. And as always, I second that. And please, if you enjoy this, uh, our conversations, please give us a, uh, a star rating and a uh, thumbs up. And as always, CJKL at sign mystery dash OTR.com and say you want in. Uh, you're invited. Any of our listeners are invited to join us they, uh, with the Zoom. We meet in a Zoom meeting room. And if you just want to come and be our audience, the nice thing about Zoom, I have the capability to put you on mute. So while we are re- during our recording, because we usually spend about anywhere between an hour, uh, 40 t- minutes to an hour just talking before we even start recording that. So it would be nice just to chat with us if you want to chat with us face to face please jump right in every week www.talkartpodcast.com talkartpodcast.com you'll see the zoom uh, meeting room and the time that we meet so uh, please stop in and say hi bye-bye folks and thank you so much for listening The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkellartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkell at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.